Okay. Well, we're definitely going to have some reactions to all of this with you guys. Um, I, I can see that um, we're going to have to get him a lollipop or something because he is definitely pissed off. But I'm not going to say that he's got to be all pro defensive line. Oh, my goodness. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy, Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo. We Sports showed you Jerry Report. Jones. There's Mike McCarthy. We showed you Jerry Jones. There's Mike McCarthy. Are you ready? The pick is in. I can't wait. People, this is it. This the is, is the draft week. How about them Cowboys? Oh. This is it, man. This is draft week. And, of course, the Cowboys, they're bunkered in. They are ready to rock and roll. They've got their draft board together. And we're going to see what we're going to see. You're going to hear, of course, all kinds of rumors about what they're going to do and so on. Um, of course, we're hearing that the Cowboys are um, dialed in or intrigued by Jonathan Brooks running back out of Texas, um, which makes sense because, of course, he tore his ACL in November and didn't do any of the workouts at the Combine, but is considered one of the best running back prospects that are there. Um, six foot, 216 pounds. Um, definitely is a good running back. I'm not sure if he'll be a first round pick or not, but I think he'll be in the second round. The question that you have to ask is what are the Cowboys going to do? Now, here's an interesting take that I'm going to give you guys. I'm going to give you an interesting take here because people think that we're going to draft the running back up really high, of course, and that we must have a great running game. And I hear what you're saying. Now, those who don't learn from the past are destined to repeat in the future. And that's where I'd like to look back at things that have happened. Because I think about things like, for example, we had a great running back in his day in Zeke. But when you think about before we got Amari Cooper in that season, that season was terrible. It was terrible. We couldn't just run the football. It was when we got Amari Cooper in the middle of the season where we were 3-5, and five, we ended up going on a run and winning the division. And when you think about Mike McCarthy, when Mike McCarthy won the Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers, one, they had a great defense. They had the number two defense in the NFL. The second part of this thing was they didn't have a lead back. In fact... When you think about the running game that they had, they weren't great. They rushed for 1,600 yards, and they averaged 3.8 yards a carry, which is not very good. Their lead back was Brandon Jackson, who had 703 yards, three TDs, and averaged 3.7 yards a carry. John Kuhn was their second leading running back with 281 yards, 3.3 yards per carry as a fullback. Aaron Rodgers was their number two rusher at 356 yards at 5.6 yards a carry. He actually brought that average up. Aaron Rodgers had 31 TD passes, 13 interceptions. It's clearly not the same Aaron Rodgers that we have right now. But what they had was they had a mix of young and veteran wide receivers that went deep because they liked to move the ball around. They had Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings had 1,265 yards. They had Donald Driver that had 565 yards. They had James Jones that had 679 yards. And they had Jordy Nelson, who had 582 yards. Does that at all seem a little bit familiar to you guys? Now, C.D. Lamb 
got the lion's share of the reception, 1,700 yards, incredible season. Everybody else was like 1,000 yards behind. But you see how you have one guy, dynamic, wide receiver, getting the lion's share. But then you've got three guys that are all there that are complimenting him. And see, you got Greg Jennings with uh, 76 receptions, and you got Donald Driver with 51. You got James Jones with 50. You've got Jordy Nelson with 45. So you've got a mix of different guys that you have to go. But you add to that also, they ended up going three deep with tight ends with uh, Jermichael Finley, Andrew Corliss, and Donald Driver. Does this at all sound like the Cowboys that we have right now? Because that's what Mike McCarthy likes to do. He's never been a, you know, we need a 1,500-yard back kind of guy. You need to have a running game. But this right here shows you his running back by committee. Yeah, they got 1,600 yards rushing. But the thing was is they predicated on great defense, ball control, moving the ball around. And this is why I would say I know that they need to get another running back. Let's be clear here. I believe that they will draft a running back, but I'm not sure it's going to be a second round. I'm not sure it's going to be Jonathan Brooks with a second round pick. I look at this and I say the Cowboys' bigger need the bigger fire they need to put out is the offensive line as good as it can be and don't be surprised if they bring in another wide receiver to add to this mix they like brandon cooks they like of course cd lamb they like jalen tolbert but if they can get another receiver in there that they are going to deem as another guy they can put into the mix along with Jake Ferguson, who is stepping up and becoming that number one tight end. If you get Schoonmaker, the idea is this. You don't have to necessarily be, and this is the problem for the Cowboys that that we, we look at too much. You don't have to necessarily be elite in all of the places. What you have to be is good in all of the places. If you are a defense, and let's say hypothetically the Cowboys get the offensive line straight, they end up drafting, you know, um, you know, it, we end up getting Powers or something at center, and they feel good on there, and maybe Tyler Smith goes to tackle, and you got Brock Hoffman or somebody to plays guard, and that the Cowboys' offensive line is in a better situation than they've been in the last few years, which is possible. You protect the quarterback and give him time. Your passing game can help your running game because you have guys that can spread out the field. Because you have to worry about Jake Ferguson, who can catch the ball and get down the field, unlike Jason Witten in his later years. When you have to worry about a CeeDee Lamb, who can go to the house. When you have to worry about a Brandon Cooks, who is another guy who can get down the field. And if Jalen Tolbert can step up, you've got four guys that you have to cover. And just because you have those guys out there spreading out the field will make it easier for the running back. Because what happens a lot of times is people will say you've got to have a dynamic running back, but then you have an ass offensive line. A dynamic running back will help the offensive line some. But he's only going to be able to do so much when you've got guys that are crashing and getting penetration. If you've got a great offensive line that can open a hole and the running back is not getting contacted till two yards down the field, an average running back can have a great season. So the Cowboys will draft a running back, but I don't think it's going to be as high as everybody thinks. Now, again, I am just Joe the fan. I'm not claiming to be an expert. You know, I don't claim to have any inside inf- information. I'm just giving you my own personal thoughts and opinions on what the Cowboys like to do. The Cowboys have been slowly, whether you noticed it or not, moving away from Zeke, now Tony Pollard, and high-priced running backs. Their thing is, 
let's spread out the field. And even with the lack of running production last year, think about it now. Your quarterback had 36 TDs, led the NFL, and only nine interceptions. If you give him another weapon that can get some separation and you can keep the offensive line together well, you expect that same narrative to get better because Jake Ferguson would be a third-year guy. CeeDee Lamb, you know, was going to be, you know, in his fourth season and really able to step up. Jalen Tolbert, who finally, you know, got, got out on the field, should feel more comfortable in his third year. Brandon Cooks has now been in the system and working with Dak Prescott, and everybody has been in the system now for a year. So that's where you look at this and say, hmm, that might be the plan. The other part of this may be is they may look at it and say, our offensive line has been in flux and has not been great any of these years, yet we've still been able to score points. What we need to is figure out the two problems we have. Stopping the run. Stopping the run and running better. Those two things point to the offensive line and the defensive line. And that may be also another clue as to where they go. You know, People automatically think, oh, it's going to be offensive line. The Cowboys are going to take the best prospect at a position and the best player available. And they'll fill in the needs elsewhere. I've seen us go into seasons where we ain't had any linebackers. And they bring in Anthony Barr in training camp. And we still didn't have any linebackers. But as we go through all the doom and gloom, all of the talking heads out there, excuse me, not the talking heads, all of the Dak Prescott haters out there will be sad to know that the Cowboys don't have any plans on drafting a quarterback. They don't. Now, if they somehow take one in the first round, you can say all bets are off on whether or not Dak Prescott stays. I'm for one that's going to say the Cowboys will get this thing done. They just have to go through hard times. But as everybody goes out there and thinks that the Cowboys are going to blow this thing up, let's just go back to a couple of years ago. I, I love this one because three years ago, they said that the Eagles and Cowboys need to blow this stuff up. Deshaun Watson is sort of hovering over all of this NFL draft. And obviously, that would be a huge shakeup if something like that were to happen with the Cowboys. Yeah, it would be. And to Dan's point, I think what he's saying is Dak's not elite. Deshaun Watson is elite. But sometimes you've got to pay Boy, they were so the really good 100%. ones that aren't elite that kind of money that they need. Mm -hmm. And in this division, guys, if you're not going to go for it with Dak, if you, if you do, I'm say if you do go for it with Dak first, you're ahead of the game. You got the Giants. Is Daniel Jones the right guy? They're hoping he is. The Eagles, maybe Jalen Hurts, maybe not. Washington doesn't know who their quarterback will be. If Dak's your Still guy don't. and you're moving forward with him, you're ahead of the game in that division by miles. So uh, unless Daniel Jones, you know, keeps improving and closes that gap, so I'm with Dan on him not being elite. But sometimes you got to pay these guys like they are elite. We've seen that with numerous quarterbacks in the NFL. So sometimes you just got to do it, even though you may know he's not special and not one of the top two, three, four quarterbacks in the league. You know, maybe circumstance dictate you got to keep him and you got to overpay him. Further, Mel, let, let me just throw this back. And, Hold and, on a second, and, Dan, because Ed Werder came on this show the other day and said, regardless of trading him, if the Cowboys don't get a long-term deal done with Dak, they would be negligent if they don't take a quarterback at number 10, where they currently sit. Now, you don't have any of the five still sitting there, but why do you think of that? If they don't get a deal done with Dak, but he's on the tag, should the Cowboys take a quarterback? I don't think one will be there, Greeny. I think you have to move up. You would be at 10, and you would be on that fringe of maybe being able to go up two, three, four spots to get that quarterback. Problem you run into here is it's going to be you're going to give up some draft choice to go up and get that guy, and you're still not sure if he will be what Dak Prescott already is. You just don't know. Uh, you hope that a Justin Fields and a Trey Lance and a Mac Jones will be really good, but you don't know. We know what Dak is. And I understand he's not super elite or elite. 
but he's a really good quarterback. And like I say, and in that division, uh, that's not a bad thing to have. That's going to put you ahead. That's going to make you the favorite to win that division. I also think offensive lines in need area. Rayshon Slater from Northwestern, Elijah Vera Tucker from USC would make sense. The cornerback, whether if it's not Sertan from Alabama, Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech. So I would rather use that pick on either a corner or an offensive lineman and have Dak as my quarterback than move Dak or do something with Dak there and have to try to figure out which quarterback do I like and which young quarterback I'm moving forward with. Uh, that would be a dangerous situation to put yourself in. Diana Rossini, help me. If, if the Cowboys don't get the long-term deal worked out with Dak and there is no reason to believe they will based on what has happened, how should we expect that to play out? They're going to have to figure out who's going to play the quarterback position. They're going to have to do that. And in terms of what they're thinking now, the thought process when I was talking to sources with Dallas just two days ago was that they're going to be able to work this out either way, whether it's the tag or the long-term deal. The conversations I was having was more about what they're going to do with that 10th pick. And it's more in the direction of what Mel was just talking about with the offensive line, which, you know, you think about Dallas, we don't talk about them meeting an offensive line. Uh, it's been a while because uh, they've always been so great there, but we saw so many injuries last year. So in terms of the organization, the sense I'm getting from those that are working in scouting and in coaching right now, it's that this is going to get hammered out. Canty, what do you think? I, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, here's the thing. We're talking about Here this we negotiation. Go. It really isn't a negotiation. This is a stick-up by Dak Prescott because he has so much leverage. It's no gun, no mask. Put the money in the bag. At this point, why would Dak settle for a deal that's below <laughs> market when he's only one season away from true free agency in the market being able to command over $40 million a year? It doesn't make sense for Dak Prescott to settle for a team-friendly deal. If Jerry Jones wanted something like that, he would have done it a couple of seasons ago. Just last week the San Diego Padres paid Fernando Tatis Jr. four years before they had to and gave him 340 million dollars. Do you know why? Because it gave them the flexibility to be able to spread that hit on their payroll over 14 years. If the Cowboys were so concerned with the structure in the salary cap, they would have done this deal years ago. Dan, I'll give you the final word. Go. Baseball doesn't have a salary cap, so that's why Tatis can, you, they can pay him whatever you want. I, I'm not saying Dak Prescott should should play for $20 million. Do I think that Dak can look? Because here's the thing, Chris, you know this. You go into the NFL as a young player with one goal, get to a second contract. Now that second contract is going to always be different for guys. We know that's going to happen for Dak Prescott. He has earned a ton of money. So now the question is, does Dak just want to get a ton of money? Like, that's it? Because once you, as a good quarterback, take a ton of money from your football team, team success. It's never happened in the NFL. So Dak can ask himself, maybe I will take less than what the market demands, but still get a ton of money and go, what Patrick did. Be another offensive lineman. Go get us a better defense. That's what I'm saying. You're a good player. Take a really good contract, not the greatest that you can, so you can win. I I'm going to leave it right there. So Cincinnati, cancel it. Baltimore, cancel it. Eagles, cancel it. Um, yeah, yeah, but I'm going to end it with this here. If we had listened to the talking heads out there that said that the Cowboys, like people are saying now, that they should take a quarterback because they need a quarterback because of uh, instability, minding you that the 2021 draft ended up having Trevor Lawrence go number one, Zach Wilson go number two, and Trey Lance go number three. By the time the Cowboys ended up being there, you had Mac Jones and Justin Fields left. We took Micah Parsons. So think about that for a second. What if we ended up with Mac Jones or Justin Fields and didn't get Micah Parsons? How screwed would this team be right now? You know, we have three quarterbacks that have experience in the NFL on the roster currently. We have more quarterback experience than I almost would say in, than, than linebacker experience. I would say we have more than center experience. Than quarterback, I would say we have more quarterback experience than running back experience. 
I think you really need to look elsewhere other than quarterback. All right, good people. As always, uh, I've got a doctor's appointment this morning. Got to get this thing checked out. Oh, excuse me, thing checked out over here. That, that's kind of a mark on my face. Hopefully, it's not cancer. And um, get back and get my stuff together because from here on out, it's nothing about the draft. And tomorrow we'll be seeing my buddy, Game Time Brian, will be live streaming from Joe Boo's Man Cave tonight. So I'll see you there. I got to get all this shit packed up and make sure I got all my cameras, all my lighting equipment and microphones and everything else. The NFL Draft is here. Peace out, good people. How about them cowboys? Cowboys.